Welcome, welcome back to Counter Culture. We got to do that again. He's got to get. Oh, I got to say welcome there. back. Yeah, at the same okay. time. Okay, right. ready? Are you ready? Welcome, welcome back. back. That was good. That was Harmony. actually really good. We, we should probably. We, we should got probably, the baritone in here with us today. We may have to go to moments with Mark and sing a song. Right. 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 Hey, we're on a special counterculture. It's special not because uh, Pastor Mark and I are here. It's special because Garrett's in the middle. And uh, we're talking about things that go against culture. Garrett and the gallows. Ooh. We could call it. Instead of, Ducks in the Ducks. Ducks. <laughs> Instead of Mel in the middle, we're going to have Garrett and gallows. Yeah, gallows. I kind of like that. Oh, Garrett on morbid. the cane. Ooh, there's a lot of... Ooh. Off with his head. Just like the French Revolution. I like where this is going. I know. So, <laughs> this is the Mark who gets a little bit, you know, weirded out with my medieval stuff. But notice oh, what he God. talks about. Yeah. Gallows, gallows and guillotines and things like that. I'm transforming him. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's the deal. All yeah, right, Garrett. That's it. We talk about counterculture stuff on this show when we're not laughing and having some fun. Uh, but things that, that go against the norm, right? And so you came in this morning and I immediately thought, Garrett is against the norm. Right uh, there, there are a whole bunch of characters in the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, that had job changes. Right, they were they were just minding their own business, tending their sheep, or leading armies, right, and doing all these things. And God shows up and says, uh, "No, let's do this." Right, so all these prophets that were out and taking care of their poor little sheep, and God said, "Could you go tell this king this?" Right, it's a job change. Right. Saul had this whole idea. One moment he's persecuting Christians. God says, let's change your job title. And how about if you become an evangelist, right? Mm -hmm. And a prophet and an apostle and all these things. So you recently decided to have a job change, right? Yeah. In a a lot of people's minds, maybe not Pastor Marks and I, because we're we're much broader thinkers. But in a lot of people's minds, uh, they would think that you are crazy. Oh, yeah. Right, so you were working where, Garrett? I was working at a very successful craft beverage manufacturer. Look at that, right? So it, it, very successful is putting it, you know, mildly. Yeah, yeah, it, right. It's a really, really, really popular place around here, right? Mm-hmm. And you were working there, right, making pretty good money probably. Not Absolutely. as much as Pastor Mark makes, but, but you're making pretty <laughs> yeah, good money. Yeah, very close. <laughs> Nipping at his heels. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right? The You'll get a Mercedes. I mean, no so free lunches too. from my congregation. Yeah, that's but it. I'm doing all right. <laughs> no I'll, I'll your, help you with that. No I'll leaving your wallet at home. Really yeah, yeah. Right? Right. But, right. but probably probably benefits. It was good, right? Oh, yeah. You're, so you, you were well taken care of. Right. Uh, and then you you uh, you decided to take up a call. Yeah. I know I, I am familiar with this idea, right? That's how I, I started out in ministry was went from being a assistant manager in a long time ago drugstore uh, and then went to the same place, not the same place, but the same field that you're going to. So God called you out of the beverage producing facility yep. and he called you where to the christian education facility in lansing michigan new covenant mm-hmm. christian school new covenant now this is a thriving right five thousand student well teachers are well paid well taken <laughs> care of this is a this is a top-notch church uh opportunity right god promoted you up right not necessarily monetary wise but i feel like i have been promoted in terms of spiritual and just the satisfaction that I feel like I'm going to get from from this change because I'm taking my children mm-hmm. in there with me along with a bunch of other people's children. That's always good by the way if you're moving yeah. and you have kids yeah. it's good to take them with you. No, into the school. Oh, you take them into I'm the school. Yeah. Okay. At too. It's good to take them and with you and then take them with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Moses yeah. might not have done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but it's good for you to do that. But yes. no, I get your point. I definitely taken a step back in terms of uh Caesar note compensation, mm-hmm. you know. So, okay, so let, let's ask Pastor Mark this question. Uh, in your in your ministry, right, times, right, how many times have you had somebody walk up to you and say, hey, I'm, I'm going to leave my good job where I can take care of my family and we're well taken care of, all of this stuff, and I, I'm, I'm going to be called into ministry? Does it happen frequently? I, I have not had it a lot, no. I mean, most people are looking for security and, you know, 
it's one thing if I do it because I'm the pastor. <laughs> right. Oh no, no, that's not. But it doesn't. It doesn't he also do that with? Uh, I, I hate to say layman, but for mm-hmm. lack of a better term, because uh, ministry isn't just about us. You know, I'm reminding my church constantly. My job is to equip you for works of service, not for me to do everything. Mm-hmm. You know, as as I saw someone put on Facebook, how do I how do I help my church board understand that I'm not an employee? Not their employee. This is my calling, and it is to help them. You know, I love that. So again, from the pastoral standpoint, uh, Garrett, well respected in his church, uh, leader in his church, right, doing some preaching, kind of an irreplaceable person in our churches. Mm-hmm. We don't have many of those mm-hmm. people, right? Uh, so when when someone like Garrett comes up and says, "Hey, pastor, I think I'm going to take a calling in Michigan," right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what does that do to it? How do we normally react and, and, and look at this whole situation? Because I bet there's a whole bunch of people, Garrett and, and Pastor Mark, who said, yeah, you might be crazy. But mm-hmm. like this, this probably isn't a God thing. Why would God take you out of a successful mm-hmm. ministry and taking care of your family and, and selfishly, you know, doing videos down here with us at Dresh Ministry? Why would God pull you out of all of that for a little tiny school in Michigan? Yeah, and I've definitely had some time to think about that and I did have a lot of people that, that I love and care deeply about at, at Cayentone and, and in other areas of my life express oh we're we're losing you guys we're losing your family and I really just just prayed about that and meditated and what I got was that that's that's wrong <laughs> and I and I said in our last um uh, Sunday at Cayentone last week, I said we were lost when we got here. Mm. And by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we were found. We were converted and subsequently loved, discipled, equipped, and now we are being called. So instead of thinking that we are being lost, I want um, my brothers and sisters at Cayentone and, and elsewhere to think that we're being sent. Okay. So how? So Pastor Mark, how do we do that, right? In this counterculture that we're trying to create, right? There is a sense, legitimacy to a sense of loss all, all of the time. Mm-hmm. How do we? How do we flip the script on that and get Garrett's point of view and and teach that even as pastors, right? That we're not losing you, right? Yeah. We're commissioning you to go out. And be a part of the bigger kingdom. Right, right. Yeah. I, the, the, well, it's p- part of it is the, the challenge for pastors as well as local churches is w- we have seen Christianity as building a church, mm-hmm. an individual church, mm-hmm. yep. instead of thinking about the kingdom, mm-hmm. kingdom building. <clears throat> now we could say why. Why Michigan? As we were talking about, there's a bunch of my denomination. They're, they're on every, you know, they're all over the place up there, you know. Um, but the, we have to remember being sent. I had a retired pastor in my church told me, pastor a church that never grew in the sense of numerically. But he goes, that church put out more preachers, more missionaries, sent people to out. Yeah. And it never grew numerically, but it mm-hmm. built the kingdom. And I think the difference is we've got to start thinking kingdom mentality. You asked me about, the, you know, have I had anybody? I had someone who was working in a mechanics job and went down to North Carolina to work for a big ministry down there. Yeah. And you can figure it out which one it was. doesn't matter. And here's the thing. I was like, this is so cool. They're going to be making such a huge difference. And my mindset was we have an opportunity for our ministry here to expand, to reach out places, and and we're we're help, we, we we need to send them on this on their way. Yeah. The interesting, I had one board member at the time come up to me and say, well, "What are we going to do?" I says, "What do you mean?" Well, they're leaving and they do this, they do that. And I said, "This isn't their church; it's God's church." I said, "You know, what's funny is there's he goes, well, what he was the treasure? <laughs> goes, what about their tithe?" And it was funny because like a week later, there was this couple that came in who had retired who came in. They matched. They basically, their tithe covered the other. And we're doing stuff that the other, it, you know, when it is our church in the sense we need to take ownership of it, that this is the place where I am committed. This is um, 
where I'm, not only am I choosing to worship, but I am choosing to, to serve. Yeah. But as the Lord said to me 10, 12 years ago when I was going through a little bit of a rough time, he said, who do you work for? I said, well, my denomination. And he said, who do you work for? Yeah. Ah, mm. yes, I work for you. And now, we're in relationship with him. I get it, we don't work for him, but we, we serve him. Yep. That's who we serve. And if he says, I, I've done what you need to do here, yeah. now we're, and, and to, here's the cool thing, if we can say, well, we have a part of that. It isn't just about us, because that's a, that's a little bit of a carnal thing that every church has to some degree. How do we get more people in your pastor? Yep. Or that more usually here, how it's going to grow. How are you going to grow this church? Better? No, 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 no. Or this isn't a me job. You know more people than I do. Yeah. How are we going to do it? How are we going to do this? Yeah. And and do we, you know, one of the, one of my most special moments at the church I'm at now was when we prayed over a guy who studied for the ministry and we sent him to go pastor. That was, that was a proud papa moment for me that I'm like, we're, we're sending this guy off, and I hope that your congregation, you know, where, where you're at, I know you're not the pastor, you ministered there. I hope they will get to the point and say, wow, we had a part in building the kingdom. And as he goes, especially as you're going to be hopefully helping young minds today, that need to be directed toward God, because they're not going to get it. There's another counterculture in more secular settings. Right. So... Garrett, how, because I, I love what Pastor Mark just said, right? How have you wrapped your head around the difference between leaving and losing? Because you also could feel like you're losing, right? right? Like, yeah. look at all that I've done, look at all I've invested in, and I'm just, now i got to leave it all, mm -hmm. right? How have you wrapped your mind about, around that whole thing? I heard a really good message by a gentleman named Nate Wilson. He's the son of Douglas Wilson, a a pastor out in Moscow, Idaho, who's really done some amazing kingdom building stuff out there in terms of just a whole Christian community, you know, not just the church, but network of, of people that run businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, he made the analogy of churches, small C churches as battleships, right? Mm -hmm. And some people don't want to go into battle. They just want to keep the ship in dry dock, keep it all, you know, nice and shiny, yep. Yep. never take any any dents from any cannonballs. He says, no, that's not what we're called as a capital C church to do. It's to go on the high seas and it's to raid the British merchant ships for lost souls and, and take them. And you're going to sustain some damage mm -hmm. if, if you're doing it right. And sometimes damage looks like criticism in the press. Sometimes, um, you know, that means losing people to go fight on in a, in a different theater a different a different yeah. battlefield so and it's interesting this school that i'm going to work at their mascot is is the warriors mm -hmm. so just having that you know warrior mentality it's not a sedent, sedentary life you yeah. know it's you 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 have to be out there you have to be physically um, mobile and, and willing to go where you're needed to fight at that time you, you talk about that uh, battleship that's a great <clears throat> analogy i heard us uh little meme i don't think they called them memes back in those days but it was uh ships are safe in harbors mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're not designed for harbors no. <laughs> they're not designed no. to just sit there they're no they got to go out and, well, and do it, what they're supposed to do it's funny because you think of pearl harbor and you think of all the ships that were in harbor mm -hmm. that weren't safe and they're just sitting they're mm -hmm. waiting for an attack mm -hmm. from the enemy right and 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 again i mean they weren't waiting but yeah. they knew it was coming but they're they, like, God moves us sometimes because he knows that stuff's coming, mm -hmm. right? And, he, and he, he moves us around. So, yeah, <clears throat> you're going from a, you know, a workplace attitude, right? Working with adults all the time, all this stuff. And now you're going to be thrust into a classroom yeah, where you are, are going to be the teacher. Mm -hmm. Does that scare you? Uh, a little bit because I'm, I'm rusty. I, I've done some teaching before I did a fair amount of substitute teaching between uh, the colleges that I would transfer to at the K through 12 level. When I was doing my graduate work out in Michigan, it was an assistantship, so I had to teach basically to pay my tuition, mm -hmm. uh, lower level freshman, um, sophomore lab classes. And then when I first moved back here and got a job at the beverage factory, I was teaching at JCC, same type of thing as I was doing for my assistantship. 
Um, but I joked with the people I worked with. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to teach younger kids now. <laughs> and, and my role there was a lot of, you know, training. And I was getting to be sort of the old dog there. And I had been there for almost 15 years. So I got an opportunity when someone new came in and needed to learn all the stuff in my department since I was the old grizzled veteran, I would be in charge of passing that on. Not the same as stepping in front of a middle school classroom, but you still need to communicate. You still need to transmit what you know to other people. So let me wrap this up. You, <clears throat> you were doing the norm. Mm-hmm. Taking care of your family, right, in a, in a way that, that you could, that most people are doing, right, and, and feeling pretty comfortable, pretty, pretty, you know, secure in that. And then God says, uh, hey, I'm going to move you to Africa. Uh, when, and I'm going to move you, having just traveled to Michigan, you know, it's pretty close in yeah. some places, right? <laughs> it's a jungle out there. That's right. But, but God, <laughs> God, God said, hey, Garrett, I, I want to move you, right? Was it tempting to say, hey, God, you got the wrong person? Mm. It was so amazing in hindsight. It wasn't like a trumpet call, like, you must go to Michigan. It was just God orchestrating all of these different things with my family, my wife and the conversations that that we had between the two of us, um, with my children, with things going on with some of her family back there it was just more of a directing a guiding and uh it's sometimes a push sometimes a put your hand in my hand and let's go sometimes the heels were dragging but everything just seemed to work to point that way and it's still it's still happening yeah and you look back and it's like well it couldn't have happened any other way, yeah. you know, and, and maybe this is the, you know, reform coming out on me, God's sovereignty and, you know, un, unthwartable will. Like, I really feel like there, there was no other way for me to go. Amen. All right. So Pastor Mark, as we wrap up this counterculture, uh, we want more Garrett's, right? We, we want more people to respond to the call of God, mm-hmm. right? As pastors, we may be a little leery of that, like taken from Pastor Mark's church, not mine, right? Type of thing. But but we wanna we wanna raise up people. As a pastor, how do we encourage people to be counterculturist in this idea? Like, hey, answer the call that God gives you, right? How do we do mm-hmm. that? Well I think I, you know, you and I cannot call anybody. Right. Um we may have we may see gifts and and abilities and people to say, wow, that would be, I can see that, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, on the strengths finders, one of my strengths is individualization. I can look at someone and say, oh, this person would be really good at this. But that doesn't mean I get to call them. I could ask them, is, you know, would you consider, pray about doing this? But I think it's, the biggest thing is just encouraging people to seek God, first of all, and yep. then God's will, which is God's will is more about our character development than it is about individual jobs or what we're supposed to be doing. He'll get us where we need to go. Okay. He always does. Yep. We might, you know, go the long way and make a little little detour, but he'll get us where he, where he really wants us to be. Never forcing us. God's not abusive. He's not going to twist our arms and say, well, you could have said no to this. Right. Well, you would have been miserable probably. But you, you, know, you could say no to it because like, I don't know how many people I've seen who have had a call in their life and just were resisting it. You know, the worst time in their life was when they were resisting. Yeah. It's like, just just say yes. He's, you know, we maybe part of it is too, and this is why, okay, I'm going off here. Not going off, it's just there's thoughts coming so we need to quit thinking that God is against us. Mm-hmm. If God's asking us to do something, it's it's for our best and for the best of the kingdom. Yeah. You know, that's why people say, "Oh, you know, God's really mean." So tell him you want to. You, you don't want to go to Hawaii because then he'll send you where you don't want to go. I'm like, like really, you got a messed up image of God <laughs> that we got to play games with him. Yeah, you know what I mean. Good luck. You know. No. Uh, so, of course, I always said I'd never go pastor in New York, and <laughs> here we are. But I think it's, it's being open. It is saying, God, what do you have for me today? And it isn't just for pastors. It is 
and and, and I, I worked when I was in college for a at a church, and the pastor, you know, he talked, he was sharing his testament about how his grandmother called him into the ministry. No, 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 grandma, don't call you into the ministry. She might think, okay, I think I see Andy's got some gifts and yeah. talents yeah. here. I think God could be calling him, but grandma don't get to call you. God calls you, yeah. and to I think to encourage people to just know God so well, and you know that you know when God, if God says, here's. And how many people have said, well, I think we're just supposed, God's calling us to another church. No, that's usually because you're mad at the pastor or something. No, 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 that's not the same thing. God's calling you to go fix, you know, work on the problem, and then he might call you to another church. But it is, I think the biggest thing is to know God, to be in such a relationship with God that you, he knows your heart, that you know his heart. And he's like, yeah, this is where we're supposed to go. And we may not like it, but can we trust that that God knows what he's doing. And then, and we're looking here. We're looking here between birth and death. And and so, you know, there's another, that great philosopher, I think it was uh, Winnie the Pooh said, don't be, don't be sad that it's over, be glad that it happened. Yeah. You know, for myself, what I've had to do, because I don't wanna see Garrett go, I've enjoyed just getting to know him. It's like, now I'm just starting to get to know him and now he's leaving and maybe that's good so I don't have to find out all the badisms <laughs> about him. But anyway. Or him about me. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. He already knows about mine. But uh, I, I consider it great, a privilege that I've gotten to know him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, be, and the conversations that he and I have had, few as they've been, but it's like they've enriched my life. And now I know he's going to go and he's going to make, because I, I know, I, I know, I've seen a glimpse of his heart. I don't know him, that, uh, everything about him, but I've seen it up him that I know yeah. that these, these kids are going to benefit from him being there, not because, oh, he grew because of what God's doing through him. And that's a beautiful thing because we need that so much today. So the, the question is, would God call someone out of successfully taking care of their family, right, to become a middle school teacher? Mm-hmm. And the answer to that is, yes, he would. Yeah, absolutely. Because who are you trusting in the beverage job? Are you trusting in God? Yeah. Well, it expands. That's tough, man. You know, when when I was converted three years ago, like my family went from William and Teddy Kane to you, Andy, Summer, all your yeah. kids. Yeah. I mean, we can argue about the covenant with children and and all that, but mm-hmm. I'm, you know, I'm gonna be there with. Uh, other people's children that they have trusted yeah. to me and there's there's nothing in the bible that i see that i am supposed to teach other people's children so my mentality going into this is i'm an assistant teacher to all of your parents mm-hmm. and that's what i want to make clear to them the first day that the job of teaching you yep. is your mother and father <laughs> i'm just here as another is another resource. What do you want to do and how can I help you get there? Mm -hmm. That's a fantastic line. Hey, we're going to leave it there, counterculture. Garrett's not, he's not leaving and he's not going away. This isn't a saying goodbye because we have the unbelievable ability to call people in. We can find Garrett whenever we really want to find Garrett. So we're going to be, we'll we'll be doing some updates and some things and Garrett will be back and and, uh, all of those things. But uh, we, we want you to pray for Garrett and we want you to pray for for other people who are feeling the same calling, the same sense of, you know, hey, God's calling me to do something that seems to be way out of the norm. So we will see you next time on Counterculture. Grace and peace.